I grew up on the west side of Chicago. I attended Medill Elementary School, Lucy Flower High School, Herzl Junior College. And uh, I think it was in high school when they showed us about females in the military. And then on the buses in those days, they would have advertisement on the buses. And I would look at that and I said, hmm, that sounds interesting. And when I go down the street and I see uh, a military female, I would ask them about their experience. And that's what got me interested. And when I decided that I wanted to go to the military, my mother said, well, why don't you go to two years of junior college first? Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Oh, they were very supportive. Now, I know a lot of parents are not supportive of especially females joining the military, but they wanted me to go to the Navy. Hmm. But no, I wanted the Air Force. The Navy was four years. Hmm. The Air Force was three. And I said, well, if I don't like it, four years is a long time. So I decided I'd go with three years and go to the Air Force. Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas. And it was a wonderful experience because, see, I grew up in an all-black uh, elementary school, but I was in an integrated high school at Lucy Flower. But going into the military, I met people from different ethnic groups. Plus, I met people from different states. And my roommate was a Caucasian girl from Georgia. And we got along fantastically. I just thought that it was a wonderful thing to do, to get to know other people, other cultures, different foods they eat. See, this is what we need to do nowadays. We need to get to know other people. And then we'll find out that we have so much in common and that we have something that's different that we can share with each other. And that was very important to me. It was fantastic because I was never in the South other than Lackland. And when you're in basic training, you don't have a lot of running around within the, you know, off base or anything like that. And when I left Lackland, thank goodness, I went to Rantoul, which is Southern Illinois. So. They always said to me, well, hope you don't get an assignment to Biloxi, Mississippi. I go, oh, no. And I was assigned to Manhattan Beach, Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And I was in what you call personnel. They gave us tests, but I didn't score high in technology and all of that. So I had a choice between food service, because they put us in food service, or personnel. So I chose personnel. And I worked in the orderly room. So I would process airmen who came through our base. And I was in the uh, support squadron. So I was a morning report clerk. I kept track of people who went on leave, who went AWOL, and I kept their records. Okay. We didn't have any racial problems in all of my experience in the Air Force, but like I said, I was never stationed in the South. Mm -hmm. Now, even though I was in Southern Illinois, oh, one time we weren't allowed to attend different you know, movies and things like this. But a group of us went to some tavern or a little place that the, vet, that the airmen went to. And I was the only black. But they didn't give me any trouble. They didn't tell me, you can't come in here because it was a group of us. Mm -hmm. So I never, I never had any problems. And I got along with everyone because I was young. I was pretty. The <laughs> fellas liked me. <laughs> now, that's one thing 
that went wrong for me because I did not have a mentor. See, young people need mentors because there are a lot of things you don't think about. Like I didn't have a mentor to tell me, take that officer training school, do that. Don't let that opportunity uh, pass you by. Well, another mistake was I did not stay 20 years because I enjoyed my job. I enjoyed being in the Air Force, and I wasn't sure did I want to enlist because I knew it was very important that I finish college. So this one lieutenant said to me, whatever you decide, make sure you continue your education. So that's the choice I made. But I'm very sorry that I didn't stay 20 years, make it a career, because I really know I would have been one of those high-ranking black female officers. I am very strong, and I would have made sure that all those anal all those airmen, regardless of their race, I would have made sure they were treated properly. And even though I might have gotten in trouble myself for going against, you know, the powers that be, I would have made sure that they were treated properly. You know, when you think about your time in the service as a woman, um, how do you think your time was different than, say, women of the World War II era that came before you? Oh, well, you know, they had a really rough World War II, and most of them were nurses. So that was a very difficult assignment. I think women that serve today have more opportunities, maybe, than we had. Now, like when I was in the Air Force, they didn't allow us to carry guns, but I think nowadays they do. But we didn't. And see, I think most of us in my time were personnel, paperwork, or food service. But see, nowadays the girls are doing everything. I attended college on the GI Bill. And also being a veteran, with certain jobs and certain things, if all things being equal, veterans would get a preference. Mm -hmm. So when I signed up for Fulbright Hayes Teaching Fellowship, I told my relatives, my mother, I said, I'm going to get this. And she says, well, what makes you think you're going to get it? I said, because I'm a veteran. And I know there are not going to be a lot of preschool teachers applying for this opportunity. I did get it. And I spent a year in England on the teacher exchange program. That's when I met the Queen Mother. It was an amazing experience, and not only that, I had bought some fabric in Lebanon. And one of my parents, I call all my children's parents are my parents. One of my parents made an outfit for me, a dress and a jacket. And the queen mother complimented me on my outfit. Oh my. And when I told her one of my mothers made it, and when I went back and told that lady that the queen mother had complimented me on the outfit she made. Oh, she was just, she, oh, she was ecstatic. Wow. In my day, our parents kind of pushed us toward working for the government. That was one of the best jobs in the 50s that black people could get if you didn't go to be a nurse or a doctor or a lawyer. So, um, I was in junior college majoring in business, office procedures. Now this Caucasian male teacher, I don't even remember his name, I don't even remember having him in it, being in his class. 
I was walking down the hall and he said to me, Amelia, what is your major? And I said, business. He said, you should think about being a teacher. I said, me? A teacher? He said, yes, you would make an excellent teacher. He said, think about it. I never thought about being a teacher. So I walked down the hall, went in the office, and looked at the teacher sign-in sheets. And I said to myself, I wonder what it would feel like to sign in as a teacher. Do you know that six years later, this is before the Air Force, six years later, I walked into that very office and signed in as a teacher, and I was there 43 wow. years. One person can make a difference, and this is why I say it's good to give people ideas that they never thought about. I never thought, me, a teacher? Mm -hmm. My message to students would be, if you are not sure of what career feel you would like to follow. Join the military, whatever branch you choose. Of course, you know I'm a little biased. I say go to the Air Force. We always sleep on clean sheets. <laughs> so I would say go to the military. That would give you time to go away from home, and that was a great thing I like about being in the military. I got away from home. Because, you know, your parents are always bossing you. But if you get out, you got to be on your own. And you got to think and make decisions for yourself. Even though in the military, they're making decisions for you when you get up, when you go down, all those kinds of things. But I think that gives you an opportunity to maybe think about what you would like to do because you will get exposed to a career that you never thought about. Be adventurous. Mm -hmm. So that's my uh, recommendation. I would tell them, think about it. And when you see veterans, just talk to them. Mm -hmm. Just talk to them. You're in the Army. How do you like it? What do you do? What do you know? Just talk to them. That's what I did. But I just thought, oh, that should be exciting. That should be a, an adventure. That would be something different. Now, even though you may go and may not like it, it's an experience that's worth the try. And nowadays, I'm finding that people are giving us veterans a little more respect than they used to give us some time back. And I always wear my cap, and I meet an awful lot of very nice people. I meet veterans. I meet people. I met a teacher in Tony's grocery store. <laughs> And we started talking, and she was telling me, oh, you should go to the schools and talk to the children. That's what she was telling me, because I was telling her about my experience in the Air Force. You went on the honor flight. Yes. In April of 2019. Tell yeah. me about that. What was that experience? Oh, that was fantastic. It was fantastic. They really made you feel good about being a veteran. And those volunteers were fantastic. They didn't let you want a thing. And the coming home was unbelievable. Bagpipes playing, all these handsome men standing to greet you and you shaking their hands. And it was fantastic. I have never had an experience that made you feel important. It made you feel like you're somebody. It was a long, long day. And at the end of the day, I was getting tired. That World War II memorial, oh, that was just, in, that was unbelievable. 
it was just beautiful. And I just thought, oh, man. And then they had the Air Force uh, Memorial. And, and you look at all those veterans. They were up in their age. And it made you have respect. You think these are the people. And I don't think people understand the importance and what these veterans did. My father was in World War II, and I have a poem that he wrote. And he was in France in 1944. That's when they had the big, big fight. And when you think about Oh, what all these veterans, these people, it's unbelievable. There should never, ever be a homeless veteran. Now, I don't care if they got on drugs or what, what, what. There should never be a homeless veteran in the United States of America. And we don't realize the life that we have today. If those men had not fought in World War II, can you imagine? Can you imagine? People just don't understand what we have in this country. When people would say, thank you for your service, I would always say, why are they thanking me for my service? I didn't go to Korea. I didn't, I didn't really fight, fight, fight. And those soldiers on that trip, that's the one lesson that they taught me. Don't you ever think that way because you signed up. You did what you were asked to do. You gave your service. So you deserve the thank you that you get. So nowadays when people say thank you for your service, I thank you for your gratitude. I thank you for appreciating it. Well, Amelia, thank you for your time today. I appreciate having this opportunity to okay. talk with you and meet you. Okay. And thank you for your service. Oh, you're Appreciate more than welcome. You're more than welcome. And thank you for the opportunity to share my experience with others because I love doing that. I love doing it. I love being in the military. I love being a veteran. And I'm sorry I didn't stay 20 years. Mm -hmm.